We may never know for sure what it was really like at the moment when Laura Secord and the Grand River Warriors first met at DeCuse Field over 200 years ago. Writers and artists have created fanciful scenes of this encounter. However, we do have two eyewitness accounts that we can compare. Perhaps what really took place lies somewhere in between. It's true that we don't have much historical evidence to go by. The two main accounts, one by Laura Secord and the other by Six Nations warrior named John Tudela, were both recorded well after the actual events. Time sometimes dims the memory. However, the fact remains they were both there. The memories they shared are all we have to try to understand this historic account between battle-hardened warriors of Six Nations and the wife, mother and loyalist who set out to warn the British and their allies of an impending American attack. John Tutela was actually of the Tutelo Nation. His people were originally from Virginia, but joined with the Cayuga Nation of the Six Nations in the 18th century. After the American Revolution, many Six Nation peoples, including Tutelos, relocated to the Grand River. John Tutela served under Captains John Norton and John Brandt, both from Grand River. Fred Loft, a Mohawk veteran of World War I, social activist and journalist, grew up as a neighbor of John Tutela and recounted his stories for a series of articles on native issues that was published much later in Saturday Night Magazine in 1909. His is the only insider's view that we have as to what the Six Nations warriors thought of Laura Secord. You recalled the moment quite distinctly. We were on a scouting party, high on the escarpment, where we could see a long way, hoping to see any Americans sneaking through the woods. Before I knew it, there was this woman, Secord. We had no idea who she was or what she was up to. I think we scared her a bit when we stepped towards her. We were kind of aggressive, not knowing who she was. I remember that she raised her arms up in the air like she was giving up. I can only imagine what Laura Secord, alone and exhausted in unknown territory, felt at that point. This stamp was produced in 1992 to commemorate Laura Secord's gallant trek. Although there were portraits and sculptures produced of Laura Secord without the benefit of photography, which hadn't developed until the mid-19th century, we must rely on the insights and imaginations of artists. In this portrayal, Laura obviously looks a bit scared. Notice in the background there are small, shadowy figures of native warriors. It almost looks like Secord and the warriors do not see each other. The fighters in these portrayals are depicted as stereotypically fearsome 18th century warriors with their hair cut in the warrior fashion of that era. This was not the case in 1812 and though Laura Secord was doubtless frightened, the story offered by John Tudela provides us with a contrasting picture. We took her by her arms and led her to Captain John Norton. He was our leader and he could speak English he himself being half Scottish. Norton began questioning her, but I remember the other warriors were growing nervous. They wanted to hold a council to decide what should be done. Was she a spy? Was she sent to distract us? Who is she anyways? But before we could decide, Norton came and told us that she was our ally and was trying to find Fitzgibbon, the British officer over at DeCue House. After we realized she was a friend, we walked up and all shook her hand. In February 1861, an 83-year-old Laura wrote to Benjamin Lossing, who was writing a book on the War of 1812. She wanted to tell her side of the story. However, this time she refers to the warriors as savages, perhaps to heighten the drama of her story. Laura's use of the term savage is both unfortunate and ironic particularly given our broader understanding today of the many contributions Native peoples made to Europeans and to the security and defense of Canada during its fledgling days. It is additionally ironic given that many of the Six Nations allies who fought in the War of 1812, including the Kahnawake fighters who helped secure the victory at the Battle of Beaver Dams, were actually Christians. 
calling them savages reflects the prevailing racial attitudes and discourse prevalent among European Canadians during that era. And also consider this. In 1912, a delegation of Six Nation chiefs attended the centenary commemoration of the War of 1812, were photographed at the Laura Secord Memorial erected in Lundy's Lane. Apparently, her memory remained very much on their minds a hundred years after the war. And now, more than 200 years later, we are reminded again why. If we honor the memory of John Tudela and the other warriors who actually met my Laura Secord. Laura Secord, I'm running for my life. The war is raging at my door with musket drum and five. My husband lay there wounded and the enemies within. Snapping at my children while I run for Fitzgibbon My name is Laura Secord, I'm running night and day Twelve wooded miles behind me, God, lead the way To Beaver Dance Fitzgibbon and the men who set us free I must not rest, for in my breast I know it's up to me My name is Laura Secord, I'm running no I die. My flesh is torn and bleeding, my throat is parched and dry. Still I will press on boldly to give its given news. The enemy is coming, there is no time to lose. My name is Laura Secord, I'm standing face to face with fierce and mighty warriors unknown to me by race. I taste the bitter bile of fear, yet here I stand my ground. I've come to warn Fitzgibbon, take me where he can be found. My name is Laura Secord, the battle now is o'er. My news had on Fitzgibbon, Canawaga won the war. He brandishes a colonel's rank and credit for the win. But I am just a woman, and they but red skin. Sixty-five, though still alive, my body and my mind Still feel the ache, neglect can take a silent spoil of war And now I am a widow, wondering what my run was for I ran to save my husband on Brock's bloody battlefield I ran to save my children and the future they would yield I ran to save my country, I ran till I was lame now that I've stopped running, who'll remember my name? Ooh. Ooh. My name is Laura Secord, reward has come at last. Prince Edward sent a hundred pounds to recognize my past. Now at 85 I thrive on irony So I'll pour a dram for who I am And raise a glass to me